God desires for man to be saved. So he not only desired, he went ahead to make the enablement available for mankind. First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 3 as we begin tonight. Read for me. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God of our Savior. What is good? Verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. He will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So God desires that all men be saved. The scripture tells us he's not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But it's long suffering, not willing that any soul should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God didn't plan for any soul to perish. When we began to study, you know, uh, the foreknowledge of God, the predestination and the election, we saw that all of that is God's plan for all of mankind in Christ Jesus. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 tells us, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And we say that the counsel of his will is salvation. God did not plan any man for destruction. Nobody, nobody, including the atheist who says there is no God. God has them inclusive in his plan of salvation. God doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. We saw that in Ezekiel. God does not take pleasure in the death of the sinner. That's why he's long suffering, not willing that any soul should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. That brings us to the will of God in salvation. The role of God and the role of man in salvation the role of god and the role of man in salvation well the truth is that god plays the a to z role in salvation god plays the a to z role in salvation he is sovereign and we are studying the bible to see that all of god's sovereignty is revealed in the light of christ so the role of god is salvation the role of God's sovereignty is in salvation. Nobody dictates to God. God doesn't react. Nobody dictates to God. Nobody tells God what to do. And at the same time, God doesn't react. He doesn't get angry. God doesn't react. He doesn't get angry. Circumstances don't make God do something. No. No. That there are situations doesn't make God do something. Because if God will do something because there's a situation, it means he's reacting. It means he's reacting. It is not because you have a problem that God will do something. If God is doing something because you have a problem, then it means he is not God. That means that problem uh, took him by surprise. But God doesn't react. God doesn't get angry. Before the need arise, he had made provision. On Mount Moriah, on Mount Moriah, Abraham said, the Lord shall provide himself. The Lord shall provide himself. That means the provision of the Lord is himself. The Lord shall provide himself. That is why all of God's promises and all of God's blessings are in him. In him. Everything God will do is in Christ. He does not react. He is never late. He is not in a hurry. He's in charge. Nothing takes him by surprise. Nothing takes him by chance. That's why he is God. He's omniscient. He, he has foreknowledge. He sees ahead of time. And in his predestined plan, he has already taken care of the matter before the matter arrived. I'm teaching here. He doesn't react. So he does not do something because of his situation. Before that situation was ever conceived, he had already done it. Abraham said to the, to the young lad, the Lord shall provide, because the young lad said, Father, we see the wood, we see the, the, the fire, where is the lamb? He said, the Lord will provide himself. 
the lord will provide himself because it was a type of of, of the of the substitutionary sacrifice of christ the lord shall provide himself and when they got to mount moriah the lord provided himself oh yes don't touch that boy take him off uh, what, what, what benefit will i get in killing isaac isaac is just a type look there there's a ram cut up by the thick of the horns take that put on the altar and, and the bible says, we brethren as isaac was we are so isaac was to die we were to die and the ram showed up which was jesus coming to take our place that's why jesus said abraham saw my days and he was glad when did abraham see the days of jesus on mount moriah at the place of the substitutionary sacrifice the lord shall provide himself nothing takes god by chance your healing is not going to happen your healing already happened you are only coming to find out about it jesus is not going to die again to heal that one death took care of the woes of humanity that one death took care of all of all of the problems that a man will ever face that one dead your salvation was provided in that debt your health was taken care of in that debt remember sin entered into the world and death by sin so when the root of death has been dealt with then the branches that came with death will either sickness disease and all of human depravity are branches of sin until sin came into the world there was no death in the world we see what god created god's creation of this planet in chapter genesis chapter 1 uh, the bible tells us in genesis chapter 1 verse 31 and god saw everything that he has created and that it was very good sickness is not very good disease is not very good poverty is not very good ahead of time god already provided himself <laughs> glory to god please sit down and listen see me to Goldsworth. said he was sleeping up in the room upstairs and he had noise in the sitting room downstairs it was like a, a story building up there the noise became increasingly much so he took the hurricane lamp and peeped from the balcony into the sitting area and saw a creature sitting with two horns downstairs so Simit Ugosworth looked at him and said is it you when you finish put the room the way you met it before you get out good night got back on his bed and slept woke up the next day the room is back to the way it was not a prayer they that know their god god doesn't react please that's very important god does not react there is nothing god is going to do for you anymore he has already done it in christ he that spared not his son but gave him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things all the promises of god are in him yes and amen hallelujah hallelujah i said hallelujah God doesn't get angry. God doesn't react. Why? He knows everything. The fact that he knows everything doesn't mean he, he is in control of everything. 
he knows everything but he's not in control of everything but he has taken care of everything he knows everything he's not in control of everything but he has taken care of everything we are in christ you heard that he knows everything he's not in control of everything and you will soon understand what i'm what i mean but he has taken care of everything the day god reacts he is no more god that means something took him by surprise he only woke up late to realize it has happened then he started making an emergency plan god's anger refers to man's action anytime you hear god's anger it is in reference to man's action because god's anger is part of the plan man made so in god's anger the expression of god's anger is mercy the expression of god's anger towards men for their choices and action is mercy look at the fall of man god's expression to that fall was mercy he comes by moses's vision adam where are thou it's not like he didn't know where adam was he was, just, he was just calling at Adam's attention to the fact that where you're supposed to be, you have left it. Where are thou? He said, I'm naked. Who told you? The woman you gave me. This guy just messed up all of God's plan for mankind. This man just messed up everything for mankind, not for himself alone. You will think God will land Adam a clean slap, take off one side of his face before they start talking god says to adam come out took away the leaves got an animal killed the animal skinned the animal and covered his nakedness that's a loving father god's anger towards man is mercy that's the expression it's mercy how long does his mercy endures exactly remember i told you god does not tolerate sin god does not inspire sin god does not tempt with sin so what does god do to sin he punishes sin where does he punish it on himself the sin of man god is not responsible but because he is god he he has decided to express against that sin his anger but to us man that anger is mercy you're not hearing me are you understanding yes, yeah the mercy of god thank you jesus the mercy of god the mercy of god he grants rescue to man and what people call the anger or the day of vengeance today is a fallacy today is not the day of vengeance today is not the day of vengeance isaiah 61 from verse 1 let's go the spirit of the lord god is upon me yes because the lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. this is a mission statement of jesus in prophecy and remember jesus did everything and operated according as it was written so this was a prophecy all right read on that prophecy good tidings unto the meek yes he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted yes to proclaim liberty to the captives yes so liberty to the captives is a proclamation it's not a prayer isaiah 61 put
put up verse 2 for me. Read on. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. Verse 3. To appoint unto them now, that I mourn. I need your intelligent, smart self awake now. Yes. To appoint unto them. That mourn in Zion. Yes. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Yes. The oil of joy for mourning. Yes. The garments of praise for the spirits of heaviness. Yes. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Yes. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Next verse. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Now, go back to verse 1, because I want everybody to see where I'm looking for. To bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound to to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god the day of vengeance of our god part of the mission statement of jesus luke 4 17 jesus now shows up and he now begins to interpret the prophecy of the prophets luke 4 17 read for me and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written now come back to that luke chapter 4 give me 18 to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord next verse and he closed the book something is missing what is missing that is not the ministry of jesus today that's why he closed the book it's nothing like vengeance service service of vengeance oil of vengeance is fraud it's fraud it's calm jesus closed the book There's nothing like oil of vengeance. There's nothing like water of vengeance. There's nothing like mantle of vengeance. It's fraud. Jesus, whom the prophecy was concerning, the fulfillment of the prophecy, closed the book. Put it back. Let me finish it. He closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him watch the next thing he said and he began to say to them this day is this scripture which scripture isaiah 61 1 to 3 minus vengeance is fulfilled it's not the day of vengeance when is the day of vengeance the end of the age today is the day of salvation you cannot have vengeance at the same time with salvation today is the acceptable time you can't have vengeance at the acceptable time he closed the book and he told them this day the fulfillment of this scripture is here and jesus is the fulfillment of all things i'm teaching now if you understand it shout i hear you there are people who are not happy with what i'm preaching but none of them called me none of them called me there are two things you cannot take away from me number one you cannot tell me what to preach because you didn't call me you didn't send me i'm not working for you you don't pay my salary and you don't take care of me so i'm not i'm not accountable to you i'm only accountable to the one who died for me then number two you cannot decide who will hear me 
Nobody can decide who will hear me. Nobody can control those that hear me. So leave that in. Two things. You can't tell me what to preach. Number two, you can't determine who listens to me. Am I communicating? Yes. Even in the house of a man that doesn't like me, his wife is hiding in the bedroom watching. His children are hiding in the toilet watching. You can't determine who will hear me. You can't decide who will hear us. People are in the toilet with their phones, with their headphones. So you won't even know they're hearing, they are watching except they don't have the holy ghost anybody that have the holy ghost when he hears the truth the spirit of god will bear witness he will know that i may not understand what this man is saying but this thing is true because likewise the spirit itself also beareth witness with our spirit there's a witness of the spirit except you're not born of god except you are not born of god even when you are fighting me if you are really born of God inside you, you will lack strength to fight, you will only do open eye, but inside you you know in your consciousness that this thing sounds true, it may not be what I have been doing, but it sounds true, I may have to humble myself and learn Jesus is the explanation of all things thank you lord hey jesus didn't mention vengeance at all because it's not the day we are in the seventh day honey on the seventh day god rested you can't be resting and doing vengeance <laughs> Apostle gift, do you rest with God in your hand? Have you ever seen anybody that say, I want to rest? Then, as he lies down, he carries cutlass. Is that rest? No, that is stress. God cannot be resting and be doing vengeance. No, he, he is resting. This is the seventh day this is the acceptable time this is the day of salvation god is not looking for to destroy people he is long suffering not willing that any should perish no matter what they do he is long suffering and when he is angry he releases mercy what you're hearing tonight is the gospel <laughs> 